In this video, I'm going to show you how to add textures and materials to the terrain that you had detailed on the last level, as well as the difference between the two. To start off, go up to the terrain menu at the top and then click on texture. This will open up the terrain texture layers. And you'll see the layers on the right, and then you can add them from the layer tasks, as well as select and delete them. Now, the difference between a layer and the texture that you may see down here at the bottom left is dependent on your view of the terrain itself. Now you'll notice as we zoom way out of the terrain, you'll see this grid pattern. And that is the texture layer that you're seeing on the bottom left. Now if you zoom way in, you'll see that same grid pattern repeated. And this is the material that you see loaded into the layer on the right. You only see the material whenever you're zoomed in close to the terrain. If you look at the terrain in the distance, you will see the actual layer that's listed on the left. Now, the layer itself we're going to actually paint rather than trying to come up with a very large texture over the entire terrain. To start, first off, go ahead and go to the Layer Painter in the Environment and the Rollup Bar, and you'll see Default listed there as well as Default listed in the layers. We're going to change the name of this to Grass. And then you'll see it change in the Rollup Bar, and then we need to change the layer texture. For now, go to Textures, and then Defaults, and then pick Gray.DDS. I'll show you why you pick Gray in a minute. But then we also need to pick the new material. So go ahead and click on the link for the material, and it'll open up the Materials Editor for you. And we're going to use Terrain, and then Grass 1 and then hit Assign Material under Layer Tasks, and it'll add the material to your layer. Now, we're ready to go ahead and paint this onto the terrain directly. You can pick a color off to the right. We're gonna pick a nice vibrant green since it's a forest grass layer. Now, by picking that color off to the right, you're essentially overriding that gray texture that you had picked before. And then you'll see how eventually, as you lay the texture down, you can paint it on the terrain. You need to find yourself a nice empty spot on the terrain and just start clicking and dragging. And you'll notice how it starts covering the terrain with the layer that you have selected. You can increase the radius of the brush and get a nice larger and smoother coat. Now, you can also pick a different color and then layer the colors on top of it. And this is what I mean by painting the terrain. You'll notice as you go through and paint different styles of grass at different areas, you're going to eventually pick different colors over and over. And then it gives you more of a unique look as you go through and decorate every piece of the terrain with different layers. Now, one easy way that you can coat an entire island is by scrolling all the way out, increasing the radius of the brush, as you see here, and then just clicking and dragging. Now your computer's gonna slow down a little bit and that's okay because it takes a bit of processing power to do this. But go ahead and go around and paint the entire island. It's a good idea to do this as you don't want to leave that graph texture that was originally on the terrain. Now, once you have the entire terrain covered, we're gonna show you how to create a new layer. So you can start working on things like cliffs and beaches and rocks and sand. To do that, go ahead and open up the terrain texture layers once more and then click add layer. Now we're gonna rename this new layer to cliff. And then once again, we're gonna pick the texture layer. We're gonna pick the same gray.dds inside of the defaults folder. You can technically pick white, but the colors that you try to paint with are way too vibrant and they don't look very real. We find that gray and even Crytek recommends that you use this gray.dds as it gives more realistic colors as you're painting. But we're gonna use rock four as the material and then remember to hit assign material under layer tasks. And go ahead and move everything out of the way and you'll notice that it's added the cliff layer in the roll up bar right away. Now, another way to easily paint cliffs is you can use the slope. What this does is it allows you to paint between two certain degrees, between 0 and 90 degrees on the z-axis. 
we're going to paint between 60 and 90. So it'll only paint on the terrain that is angled between 60 degrees and 90 degrees. And we're going to use the same really large brush so we can cover the entire island. And you'll notice as I'm painting, it only coats certain parts of the terrain. And it gives it more of a realistic feel, at least from afar. Now, we're going to go ahead and speed up the video a little bit so you can see how going through and painting the terrain can add more and more detail as you go. Another thing to keep in mind, as you're painting the terrain, you can adjust the hardness off to the right. And what that does is, is it allows you to blend two layers together. Now, one thing to remember, as you see here, if you're having troubles painting over terrain, or over a layer, make sure that you change your slope back to zero or your altitude. And we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, and then we're going to slow this down for the beach layer, as I'm going to show you a different way again to paint. Go ahead and select your new layer, and then off to the right above the slope, you'll see altitude. Now we're going to go ahead and set this up from 1024 to 20, and that means that we're only going to be able to paint between 0, which is at the sea floor, to 20 units up. As you can tell, as I move my green circle around, it doesn't paint above the certain line on the terrain. This is really good for beaches um, along the water. Now, while these tricks reduce the amount of time it takes to paint the terrain, it's still going to take you a while to properly do it, as you're going to find that you're going to make several passes over the same amount of terrain over and over. And each time here, we're going to pick a different color, and ultimately, that's what's going to give you a very unique and natural look. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add plants, flora, and rocks to your level to give it a more lifelike look.